So let's move one more step in our SharePoint quick questions and answers video series. Question number 16. How can we use custom controls in SharePoint? Before we proceed ahead and we deploy a custom control in SharePoint, what we'll do is we'll just revise the basics of custom controls. Uh, custom controls are nothing but, you know, they are reusable entities in ASP.NET, you know, which can be made once and can be reused again and again in multiple pages. For instance, you know, you can make a custom control of a, of a grid and you can use that custom control of the, uh, the whatever the, 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 the custom grid which you have made again and again across pages. So in other words, custom controls increases our productivity because it increases our reusability. Now, SharePoint uh, gives you a provision to use custom controls of ASP.NET. So, where you can define your control and you can use again and again across site pages. So, let's look at the basic steps what you need to uh, use a custom control or what are the basic steps you need to uh, what are the basic steps you need to uh, need to deploy a custom control. The first thing is you need to create your custom control. So, custom controls are nothing but they are simple classes which basically inherit from web control. So, you can see that I have made a simple custom control. I have inherited from web control and then you need to override the render contents contents method. Now, in the render contents method, what I am doing is that I am just uh, displaying the site title and the site URL. So, basically this custom control will be uh, used to display site title and site URL. So, two steps uh, when you make a uh, custom control. First thing, your custom control should inherit from web control. All the custom controls inherit from web control. Second, because you are going to do something, you are going to display something or uh, you are going to do some kind of functionality with a custom control, that you can put it in the render contents. So, what I have done is in the render contents, I have taken the context of the site my current, uh, my current, uh, my current website that is nothing but my SharePoint site which will be running the instance of it and in the site, I have taken the site title and I have taken the site URL and displayed in the output. So basically this output is nothing but your output which is basically thrown to the browser. So, inherit from web con uh, custom control, uh, inherit from web control, I am sorry, or I overrided the render contents, after that I, uh, got held of the site object and uh, I then appended to the output the site title and the site URL, right. So that's the first first thing which I have completed. Now let's go to the second point. So now let's look at the basic steps which we need to perform in order to uh, in order to display a custom control in a SharePoint ASPX page. So, the first thing is we need to create our own custom control, right. So, let's look at the source code. So, here's my custom control. Sorry, this is my page. So, here's my custom control. Now, this is nothing but it's a simple class called as custom control 1, which basically inherits from web control, right. And uh, what I've done is basically I have overrided the render contents method and i referenced i got the i got hold of the uh, sp web object that is your the, the website uh, context and then i have displayed the site title and the site url so basically you can say that uh, this custom control basically displays site title and site url now definitely this is a theoretical uh, control i mean to say nobody would like to make a reusable control which displays site title and site url but in real projects, basically, uh, you make custom control, you can make custom controls like uh, a report viewer or you can make custom controls like probably a custom grid, a custom data grid or a custom hierarchical grid which you will display data. So, uh, uh, for, simplicity, for simplicity's sake, you know, we are just showing over here a control which displays a site title and a site URL, right. So, the first thing we have inherited from web control, we have overrided the render contents, we got hold of the uh, SP web object and then to the output we are appending the site title and the site URL uh, data, right. Now, once this is done, let's look at the second step what we need to perform. The second 
The second step what we need to perform is to register our custom control in GAC. Right. And this can be done by GAC Util. If you have seen the previous sessions where I've shown how to use GAC Util, uh, it's very easy. Just say GAC Util hyphen I, that's install, and then give the DL name with the path. Right. So I'm not showing this practical over here because if, if you see the previous videos in SharePoint Quick Questions and Answers, you will easily get how to use GAC Util. So once your control is registered into GAC Util, now it's time to refer this control on the page. Right. So here's a page which I've made called as mypage.aspx and this is my register attribute which basically re references my control. It references the version. Currently, I have not versioned it. So it's 1.0.0.0 by default. Culture is neutral. And then I need to specify the public key token. Now this public key token is nothing but when you install into GAC, it basically assigns a unique public key token. The namespace. At this moment, my namespace is namespace control, if you remember. And then I've given a name to the control. Now this tag prefix is nothing but the name by which this control will be referenced in my page.aspx. So I given the name as custom site pages. And now we have registered this, uh, this control in this page. Now it's time to use this control. So using the tag prefix name, you need to append the class name. So I have set custom site pages and then I say set the class name is custom control one. So basically this is my class name, custom control one. And I've just said run at server and given a unique ID to it. Now what happens is when the page loads, the, the render contents fires and it gets hold of the stream, which it's want to send to the browser and appends the output. Right. Now what I've done is I displayed this mypage.aspx in my template in my features called a share uh, in my features. So Basically, what I've done is I put the mypage.aspx and I've just provisioned it using the element manifest.xml. So you can see that mypage.aspx can be referenced as page a.aspx and we have already seen how to use provisioning. So in case if you see the previous videos, you'll understand what I'm saying here. Remember that uh, in the further coming sessions, you know, a lot of things uh, are taken from the past video. So if you're jumping to this video directly, Please make sure that at least you read the previous videos because the questions and answers are arranged in a in a in a manner you know where you need to understand the previous videos. So, if in case you are very much uh, stunned by looking at element manifest.xml and file URL and module, please look at the provisioning part of the video and you can understand what I'm speaking about. So, I reference this name as page a.aspx and now if I run this page, all right, you can see that it displays my site title. The site has now a custom page display. So that's my site title and it displays my URL of the site. So now I can reference this custom control in any uh, SharePoint ASPX page I want. What I need to do is that I need to just register it and use it. Register it and use it. So it has it, it becomes a reusable functionality for me and by which I can increase productivity. Uh, you can get this source code uh, on questpointvd.com in case you have bought a DVD of SharePoint then you can get the same in the source code folder so if you go to the source code folder in the source code folder we have named it as custom control example so what you need to do is that you need to compile this code which I've just shown make a DL register it into GAC register into GAC, reference the custom control on the page and then provision the page. In case you are not aware of provisioning, please look at the previous questions and answers where I've, where I've talked about provisioning, how to provision a page. And then you need to define your element manifest and feature XML by which you can display this page. And then you would be able to see your custom page, uh, custom, uh, you'd be able to see your custom uh, control on the page. So I hope that uh, this session was useful and see you in the coming questions and answers series.